Hi everyone, this is Ron from pocculture.com. I'm here with Jason Tobin, star of Warrior, star of Better Luck Tomorrow, Fast and Furious, <laughs> and of course, coming on Netflix, Fistful of Vengeance. Jason, how are you? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me back, Ron. How oh, are man. you? So excited to finally connect with you. It was <laughs> before the pandemic when we last connected after season two of Warrior. Um, since then, you've made your triumphant return to the Fast and Furious <laughs> franchise. What, what was that experience like for you to like come back and be able to be part of that franchise again? Wow. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting that you use the word triumphant um, uh, because it, it really kind of did feel like that. Because after I did Fast 3, I really thought that I would never be part of the franchise again. I, I thought that was a, a one and done uh, kind of gig and um, to get that phone call and and uh, to be asked to be back it was truly surprising and a real it was really rewarding because 15 years goes by and life changes things happen and and then um, to kind of bring that thing back full circle was 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 awesome and you know to have a movie come out that big during the pandemic was was really cool because i mean obviously we were all suffering the whole world was suffering but you know on, on a personal level it was like okay all right i haven't worked all year but hey i got a movie out cool you know and um taking the fr i can now say that i took the fast franchise to space that's right awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you you literally took the franchise to new levels <laughs> which yeah, is awesome exactly yeah um, yeah yeah. And I mean, obviously, you stayed in touch with Justin Lin, I assume, obviously, with Warrior. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. how was it to actually just be back on set with him, you know, as a director and working with him to that extent? Wow. You know, so obviously, you know, Justin is the executive producer of Warrior. So I, obviously, I have interactions with him uh, with that. However, he hasn't directed an episode of Warrior. I think that may or may not change. I think that was his original plan. And um, so, so... Yeah, after season two, he emailed me, said he was going you know, to get me back in the franchise. And then when I rocked up to set uh, and to work with him, it was weird because like, I hadn't worked with him as an actor director in, in probably like a decade by that point, you know. Uh, but like, you know, it was like, a, you know, it was like riding a bike. You just get right back on it, you know. And it was it was weird because I hadn't been on the Fast franchise in 15 years or like 13 years at, by that point. But I got back on set and there were so many familiar faces, you know, obviously Song Kang and obviously like my cast, uh, uh, like, you know, Bow Wow and, and uh, um, Lucas. But so many crew members and behind the scenes people, craftspeople like that were of the same family. Like Justin literally had, has that philosophy of, of a family, right? So I, many, many, many people that had worked on Tokyo Drift were on F9. So it was just kind of seamless. And, um, and fun and, and also like, you know, going from, not that Warrior is not a, a, a big show, but man, Fast and Furious is humongous. I remember, um, <laughs> this is, I don't know, this sounds silly and spoiled, but I remember like, you know, um, I was on set the first day and they're like, oh, what would you like for lunch? And I'm like, um, well, what is there? Cause normally they, there's a, you know, you know, there's a menu or there's a set, you know, uh, of, you know, um, a set menu or whatever, right? And I'm like, well, what is it? And they're like, oh, anything you want. I'm like, what do you mean anything you want? So oh, anything you want. I'm like, okay, well, and then I just made up something and they're like, all right, great. And then like 20 minutes later, it was there. You know, like, I was like, okay, this is, we're on another level now. They're like serious catering. I know that's probably not that interesting, but to me, I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> no, that's actually, I've yeah, never heard yeah. that kind of story before. Yeah. I love yeah. that comparison. Cause I would think like you just said that there's like a certain kind of catering menu yeah. that you could yeah. choose from. But the idea yeah. that you could ask for anything is magical. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not. I'm like, ravioli and uh, like just anything. Like, yep, okay. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And, and for me, like, um, you know, I was in Tokyo Drift, but I hadn't met any of the, the other cast members, right? The, the, the main cast. I had met Vin on Tokyo Drift, but, you know, I hadn't met, you know, Michelle or Tyrese or, you know, Ludacris and, and you know Natalie and all these the other cast members. So uh, you know, for me to sit, you know, at the at, at the barbecue scene at the end, I was like uh, looking around the table, thinking, like, "Man, how did I get here?" You know, it was truly like a yeah, a one eighty. Because like I said earlier, like um, I never thought I'd be back. 
<laughs> I never thought I'd be back. Never. I, I was really, and actually, um, I was really surprised by um, how many uh, people remembered me and how they. Uh, I got so much, uh, you know, positive feedback and responses from people on social media. So I was like really, really pleasantly surprised. And it, it's kind of a reminder sometimes that, you know, we as performers, like we, we're very judgmental about our own work. And it, it, at a certain point, you need to zip your, your lips and just go and keep that to yourself because that art that you've created is now not yours. It's somebody else's. It's their experience. So if I go, mm, then I'm ruining their experience of it, you know, because and at the end of the day, even if I if I let's say, for example, like oh, I didn't like the way I said that line or I didn't think I was very good in this particular scene, there might be another person that loves that scene. And um, so I've really learned over the years not to poo poo it, whereas like in the past, I, I would be overly humble, like, eh, now I sucked in that. Don't watch it for me or, or whatever. I'm not talking about uh, Fast and Furious, but I'm talking about just in general, my my way of being. and. Uh, and so it's kind of like saying, you know, uh, I'm reminded to the, just say, thank you. Thank you. You know, smile. Thank you. It'd be gracious. And, um, but, you know, between you, me and Ron, I think I'm fantastic in <laughs> everything I do. <laughs> well, that's what we have in common, Jason. I think that way about your performances too. Um, but thank I really you, appreciate you, that perspective because if there's anything we've learned over this pandemic is that sometimes we need the art to get us through the some really, really tough and dark times. And I mm -hmm. think it's also yeah. very Asian of you to have to be like, oh, no, no, I'm, I was terrible in that. And, and yes, then, you know, to, to just reject that praise, that's that's that yes. um, Asian part of you, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. I, yeah, I mean, it could be, it could definitely be. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly it, it came from, but yeah, you know, sometimes, um, you know, too deprecating for or, or whatever, whether that's an Asian trait or a British thing or, or whatever. But um, you know, as an actor, sometimes I, I think it's you know you get humbled all the time, you know. Um, and but then you also got to be this person that really believes in yourself, you know. And, and so I I really love Birdman for that respect because you know I, you know I re it really resonates with me because I, one minute he thinks he's a total piece of crap and the next minute he thinks he's a superhero and and I feel like that sometimes I completely relate to that and I think it um it's important you know because um one it it kind of keeps you grounded but then you need to have that audacity to to perform right like um and and um and it it, it helps with having range you know it gives me range and I, I think that's one of the reasons why I mean I love playing Young Jun because Young Jun gives me such uh, g gives me a, the the ability to like play such a massive range you know and um so you know to be completely smacked down and humbled as an actor and you know go to you know 50 auditions before you get one job but then when you get that one job you have to act like you're you know god's gift to the world you know this is the crazy business that we're in um before i used to like would really beat myself up over actually no, i take that back i still beat myself up sometimes when i don't get a gig i'm like damn it you suck and then i watch i watch warrior i'm like i'm fucking awesome <laughs> well yeah. thank goodness you have the warrior reference you can watch it anytime you want i know i know i know and anytime i feel like crap i'm like oh, i'll put on an episode mm -mm. um yeah 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 no i mean war warrior is, is truly a gift Truly, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just lucky. I mean, even with Fistful of Vengeance, you know, I, I was, um, so I shot Fistful of Vengeance in 2021. Uh, I left for Thailand. We shot in Bangkok. I left for Thailand like um, January 4th, and basically the whole of 2020 during this pandemic, um, I didn't work a single day. You know, so you know, I was very grateful to, to to you know go back and work and and um and and then again i haven't worked since this full vengeance you know it's like it's crazy this pandemic has been like and it's probably because of choice because i haven't wanted to travel as much and go through quarantine and um and that kind of thing but but 2022 come on baby let's go it's your year <laughs> it's your year it's your yes time. come on let's go so, let's go so let's go let's talk about fistful of vengeance so that's yes. fascinating you did uh 
you know, film in Thailand. You're saying January 2021. So things were still pretty tough in terms of the pandemic. Yeah. What was it like to have to, you know, make this film in the middle of a global pandemic? How difficult was that? Yeah. So uh, it was difficult. So, I mean, you know, right off the bat, um, we had to do two weeks of quarantine, you know, like not self-isolation, you know, like a natural quarantine albeit a nice hotel and a nice, um, um, nice facilities. But nevertheless, it was 14 days in a room. Um, and then on my way back, after I wrapped shooting in Bangkok, I had to do, to do another 21 days of quarantine in a hotel in Hong Kong where I live. And um, so that was tough. I mean, like, uh, you know, some people, you know, ah, you did it in a ni nice luxury hotel. I'm like, yes, yes, I did, I did. But man, I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't, <laughs> I would much rather be able to open my door and walk out. I'm not going to complain about it, but, but that was obviously the first thing was the quarantine. But then even then, once we were on set, because this was really before uh, vaccinations were out. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure what the timeline was, but in terms of uh, Bangkok and Hong Kong, uh, vaccines weren't out yet. So we obviously had to take, uh, you know, uh, all the precautions and so social distancing and, you know, mask wearing, and we were tested literally every day, uh, every two days we had, you know, the, the thing up the nose and, and, um, so yeah, so it was tough. Um, and Bangkok at the time when we, we arrived was locked down and then it kind of opened up for a few weeks, for about a month. And then it locked down again when it, when there was another wave. Um, but, you know, this is the way, you know, it, it, what's great, what was cool is that, you know, in the film business, the show business, we talk about, you know, the show must go on. And, um, you know, it didn't matter. Like, whatever the whatever the hurdles were, we just dealt with it. And fortunately, no one got sick. Uh, we, had, we all made it through the shoot. Um, and, um, yeah, and we have, like, we have, like, this really fun film and, and it's weird because like for me Fistful of Vengeance will always be my pandemic film you know what I mean it was right bang in the middle and uh during the pandemic you know because 2020 I was like all right I got I'm not shooting anything so I'll just let my hair grow out so I was finally able to use my long hair for Fistful of Vengeance and uh so yeah it was, it was fun it was just a, a fun experience and I got to work with a whole bunch of people that I've known for a long time but I hadn't actually worked with you know like um Lawrence um Lewis um and uh yeah we had a we had a hell of a, of a good time i i love to hear about that transition first of all the long hair because i follow you obviously yeah, yeah. on social media so i'm yeah. <laughs> seeing that happen and in the film um you have just yeah man some impressive locks uh they grade you <laughs> out a little bit um, yeah yeah and, and i love your role so how, like, what was it about the role and just this project overall that attracted you um, mm. from the beginning? So um, when Warrior, during season two, uh, I think Wu Assassins, the, the TV show came out on Netflix. And, um, you know, obviously I have a ton of friends on that show, um, you know, and, uh, and so Warrior, the cast of Warrior, and um, we basically, we were very, very supportive. We, we all like, um, we, Cut them. We cut a little videos, you know, on, on social media supporting our our our, our comrades on uh, on Wu Assassins and congratulating them and just you know and supporting and um, and you know we were the sort of the two shows that were that had a lot of Asian Americans and a lot of uh, martial arts and so um, so for one for me as a fan of the show and a fan of so many of the people that that work in front and behind the camera of Wu Assassins it was it was I was completely flattered when they when they approached me to be in it, and so I feel like I feel like I stole something, like I got away with something here because like I'm the only actor that gets to be in both of them, <laughs> you know. I'm like I'm a warrior and I get to be a Wu Assassins, you know. How cool is that? So when they um, when they approached me, um, I think it was you know I think the producers and, and the filmmakers knew of me from Warrior. Um, nevertheless, I still had to uh, read. And um, I just had fun with it because, you know, it's such a different role than what I normally play. And, um, you know, I get to change my look, I get to, you know, change my voice. I get to, uh, um, you know, I sound a little bit more British than I do sound American, you know? I've always had to like learn how to sound American for, for most of my projects. So to sort of use 
more of my British <laughs> sound was was cool. And um, and one of the things was like, although I love to do action and, and that kind of stuff, like I didn't have to do any fighting. It was like I get to play this different kind of dude in this in this world. And uh, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. And Eco is such a nice dude. I mean, I'm such a huge fan. I mean, obviously, I work with Joe Taslin. So to, to then go to, to work with, you know, I, I'm a fanboy, right? So to, to, to see Joe from the raid, I'm like, oh, man, that's, he's, you know. And then now, now to work with uh, uh, Eco or um, to work, you know, now to see where, where Lewis is at. He is, I, I knew Lewis many, many years ago. He was a stuntman on Tokyo Drift. And I knew, I knew his father, who's like this legendary, um, you know, stuntman and stunt coordinator in Hollywood. And so I'd worked with Phil, um, his dad, like many, many times. And I'd seen his sons grow up. And like, so now to come back and, and you know, here's Lewis leading the show. And, um, you know, he's such a, a gentleman, hard worker, you know. And um, I was really proud of him, you know, just really proud. Like, I, I feel like I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, um, it sounds weird because I don't feel like I'm that old, but like, you know, I'm proud to see where he came from and what, what he's doing now. And uh, so to be part of it and, 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 and to not, it also is nice to not be part of the crew. I'm like this other kind of shape-shifting character. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's really crazy to think about all the different connections and, and everybody have, knowing each other to a certain degree, like you're talking about between Joe and Eco from the raid. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Obviously, Lewis and Joe work together for Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. And you're in the Wu Assassins, and it's just amazing yeah. all the synergy that we have. Um, I, I noticed that you, Lewis, and Lawrence seem to have really good chemistry, like just offset, just based on social media. Yes. Um, what was yeah. it like hanging out with the, with those two guys yeah. during, during filming? Oh man, it was so much fun. I, I mean, I love those dudes. Like. Um, yeah, because of the lockdown that was there, um, we spent a lot of time together, obviously, as a cast, because, you know, you don't want to go out and mingle too much and, and expose ourselves to, to greater risk. But, um, but yeah, like, I, I had always liked those guys before, and, and then to actually get to spend some time with them was, was, uh, was really sweet. And, you know, in Bangkok, like, the food's amazing. You know, we stayed at a great hotel. We are making a cool film. We get to train with the best stuntmen and, and martial artists in the world. And um, yeah, it was it was it was uh, it was a great time with those guys. I mean, the whole the, that that cast. I mean, I've been so fortunate because the, the, the cast of Warrior is really tight, and now the cast of Wu Assassin is really tight. I think what it is is, um, you know, being Asian American or British Asian, whatever. You know, you know, what I'm getting at. Um, to be able to work in this business and to have these opportunities is truly like a blessing and yeah. and so i think we we all appreciate what we have there's you know what i mean like we're um we're not uh ungrateful and so you know you can just feel the joy like to just put in the hours do good work and then uh and then get to spend your off time like hanging out in bangkok it's so cool i mean I, just things like our tuk tuk rides were, were were awesome probably not the best thing to do as an actor is to like ride tuk-tuks because they're, they're dangerous <laughs> we had a few of those and then and when things opened up we definitely uh, took advantage of it you know uh, i remember like when they finally were uh things kind of relaxed a bit in bangkok me and me and lawrence were at the pool and we could finally drink alcohol because they like bars everything had closed right so like we we're like it sounds terrible like talking about alcohol but you know what i mean like yes we can drink <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, my goodness. Lawrence is hilarious in in Wu Assassins. He was already hilarious. I yeah. thought he was one, yeah. one of the breakout, you know, characters in, in that original series. And he's, a he's, great actor. he's hilarious in Fistful of Vengeance and does a lot more action um, than he did in the first go around. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much of his character is him? Like behind, like off camera, behind the scenes. How much is he like that? Is he really, <laughs> you know, uh, funny and good natured and hilarious? Yes. He's a very good natured. And very and he's very funny and he's a really good dancer that guy can he that guy can dance and so i i don't think he has much of a martial arts background but because he's a dancer he really knows how to move so like he was picking up the choreo very quickly 
and uh, I was kind of jealous, to be honest. Like I was watching those guys and thinking, man, what? man, I want to fight, you know, like, you know, um, and uh, and watching them do the car, I'm like, oh man, I was kind of itching. Um, but yeah, he picked it up really quickly, and um, and like, cause he like he fights it too nice. I'm like, oh man, he's got to stab and like rip people apart. And, ah. <laughs> But yeah, it was really cool. We we were training at this uh, Muay Thai gym called Satian uh, Muay Thai Muay Thai, and uh, so for for about a month before we started actually shooting, we were there most days, and I was just there to be just to, like kind of join in and be part of the training and have fun. But like those guys were actually doing the choreo, and I remember thinking like, oh, this is so cool. And you know, Rule would come in and and bring his camera and like kind of like do some previs, and then watching Eco's team kind of do his thing, and then you know. Lawrence learning his choreo, Lewis doing his choreo, and, and each actor coming in. It was it was uh, it was uh, it was really good. And in fact, we the last day of official training before the 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 shoot, um, we kind of had like a, a party there at the studio, and it kind of felt like the rap party already. And you could just feel the team spirit. And um, yeah, you know, like I, I had met Lawrence like um, several years ago, very very briefly in in LA and and uh and I had always liked him and so when I found out you know that I was you know had been offered the role in in Wu he was like the first person I texted I'm like yo dude I'm we're, let's have a great time in Thailand you know like um yeah man I, so much love for those dudes <laughs> that's awesome I have to ask yeah. you about Lewis too I Yes. I've seen him in a lot of things, right? I mean, everything yeah, yeah. from, um, you know, Deadpool, um, obviously, to Assassins, Mortal Kombat, yep. so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I legitimately think this is his best role. I think he really embodies the character of Lucian, which makes me, again, go, same question. How much of Lucian is him? It feels like that's just him. Is How much of that character embodies who he is? Well. Or not. Tell me, you know, what is yeah, it? Yeah, like? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I want to say is that um, he's a very good actor and and so I don't want it to say like oh that's him and therefore he's not a good no he's a really good actor he's a really good actor and and he's a really good leading man because he he his his um he leads from the front foot you know like and and um uh, he's a really hard worker I mean he's a dude the guy's like gifted man he's like good looking he's tall he's like you know awesome martial artist, great actor. Like, I mean, the guy's got like everything, right? And, um, but he's got a great attitude and, you know, you need, a, the, I mean, you set the tone. When you're the lead, you know, with your eco or Lewis, you set the tone. And although Lewis really is a fun dude, like Lucian, I don't want to take anything away from his ability as an actor because like, let's say he, yes, there's some parts of him like that, but he definitely ratchet, ratchets it up, you know? Um, and I do agree. I do think it's his best role. He's very, he's very fun. Like I remember, like it's like even the first episode of of Wu Assassins. Like you really enjoy his attitude and stuff. And um, like for example, you know, um, n no disrespect to screenwriters or anything, because that, you know, um, but like as soon as we got there, um, those guys, the, Wu, the the core group of Wu Assassins, because they'd already done ten episodes together, they were very much gelled and you know, they they knew their characters so well so they took the existing script and they really like um went through it with a fine comb and just tweaked everything so that it sounded like how they wanted to say it or you know it wasn't like not wholesale rewrites but you know what i mean just making sure that that lucian and you know lawrence's characters sounded and felt real to them as the actors and rule the director was very open to that they went through the whole script and did that and uh, and I think like that chemistry is so real. Uh, that chemistry between uh, Lucian and, and and Kai is like it. Yeah, man, it's it's so good. It's so good. it's so fun to watch because ultimately, like even though you want to see action and stuff, we as an audience intrinsically, for whatever reason, really enjoy watching relationships, right? Um, and then that makes all the action therefore more valuable when we do get to see it. And uh, so, yeah, sh shout out to to uh, to Lewis, man. Like he he's a good guy. And I, I, like I said, I've seen him like I've seen him like really, you know, 
yeah, I've seen him from when he was a young, young kid to like to where he is now. And he's worked really hard for what he's, you know, for what he's achieved. And, um, and man, Mortal Kombat was awesome too. I, I, I really like that. And yeah, but, you know, I think this Fistful of Vengeance, like this, you know, obviously it seemed, seemed on paper that Mortal Kombat is going to be his franchise. But man, I think, I, I think Fistful of Vengeance, man, there's, there's going to be a few of these. Definitely yeah, I, hope, you I hope so. I think there's still room for all yeah. these characters and they can, they can bring you back. I mean, <laughs> you can be in all of them. Um, but I, why not? Yeah. I, you know, why not? <laughs> you got to keep adding to the, to the team, but I agree. I mean, I think, yeah. and I certainly don't mean to say that, uh, you know, Lewis isn't a good actor and that's why this is his best oh, role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it'll, this, this yeah, role yeah. allows him to show that swagger, right? Show that like oh, uh, really his personality come yeah. through maybe a little more than like, a massive franchise character which has to be a certain way so i think yes um that's yes. that's what we see in this which is which is great um for eco you have trained with the best including joe we've talked <laughs> about joe um <laughs> compare and contrast a little bit like how impressive was watching eco do his craft and what incredible martial artist and and like you said leading man he is um you know eco first and foremost is just the loveliest dude he's just a nice humble good sound like just a like he's just a good guy you know what i mean like um and there's no um there's no ego or uh you know i'm i'm he you know what i mean he's so i don't want to say normal but like he, he, there's no um there's nothing fancy like he's not a big e egotistical you know superstar or anything he's just a normal dude and and this is what i loved about meeting him first because i you know again i fanboyed like the first time i met him was in the gym and i'm like i went to the gym i'm like oh, there's eco he's working out on his own and then i was like maybe i shouldn't maybe i should postpone my workout for like an hour later you know because i i because i knew i'd have to like go up to them and say hi i'm jason you know and uh the guy is just so cool and we we chatted i completely interrupted his workout and um but yeah through the course of the the production um you know you know it's it's obvious on screen but then to see it in person and then you know watching them rehearse and how quickly he uh picks up the, the new choreo and how awesome he makes it look in such a short amount of time is truly impressive um you know his work ethic um and his his team of guys his his stunt team like they're just top-notch people and um you know I, I for me my job just to be able to witness the, the, these kinds of people during their craft is is like is truly like a, um, special you know what i mean like um um and uh, what else can i say about eco i mean he's just a good dude he's just a good dude and he's so humble oh man like and i was uh i remember thinking because uh, i don't do a lot of fighting and and so i was like come on like and he i think eco was pushing he was trying to push for me to have more of a fight but you know story over, over is the most important thing right um yeah yeah it's so good so good those guys are incredible eco is incredible well maybe we'll get some kind of crossover between warrior and assassins so we can uh see that happen I'm, I, can you imagine if we had like lewis and, and lawrence and the other and the and eco and, oh man and the thing is what what's cool about being a warrior is that as a series regular i'd never i'd never been a series regular before but uh one thing that i now really appreciate is is how many amazing guest stars and uh, that we that come through um and you know every season we have at least you know five different directors so i get to work with so many different people and uh you know you never know you never know who's going to be in the next seasons you know i i would i i always joke that you know um you know uh warriors about the tong wars in san francisco but there were tong wars going on in new york you know so who who from the hopway in new york is going to show up one day or vice versa you know <clears throat> you never know i could imagine what lawrence and lewis rocked up as hopway from from uh from new york <laughs> i love it i love it i'm not this i i don't write i don't write the show but hey the seeds are already there it's a natural <laughs> transition we could do it uh yeah. i i do want to ask you a couple questions about warrior before we sure. get on here I've, I've held you a long time so i appreciate it 
What can you no tell problem. us? Um, well, first of all, it's going to be on HBO Max. Thank goodness. Warrior coming back was one of the best news that, that we've all heard over the pandemic. Um, and yeah. I think the first two seasons being on HBO Max, I hope has really um, exposed yeah. the show to a much broader audience. Because I think, unfortunately, Cinemax is just too niche of a, of a yeah. Um, group. Yeah. Um, so what can you tell us about the status of season three? We're getting season three. Anything yes. you can share? Yeah. Uh, so we are doing season three um, and they are literally, I think they're, they're, if they haven't finished yet, they're about to finish the writing of season three. Um, the right, what they call the writer's room, uh, which means that at that point, um, scripts will start getting pumped out and then the studios will start doing pre-production. They're going to probably start rebuilding sets because all the sets are, are like, you know, long gone now. And um, I'm, it's looking like we'll be heading out there in June. So, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm super excited. And yeah, uh, what else can I say? I, you know, you know uh, reiterating what you just said, um, it moving from Cinemax to HBO Max has been a godsend and um it really has um helped and pushed through uh these next few seasons that we're going to do so yeah i mean it, it's going to happen obviously um there's been a bit of a gap between season two and three but hey we're here we are you know i mean we went through a pandemic it's weird because like in some ways uh at&t's takeover of of uh you know Time Warner and, and everything and, and that whole corporate shuffle and then the pandemic in a in a strange way, kind of helped Warrior, um, it, um, and so you know here we are, um, you know I, when it was cancelled so to speak, um, I was devastated. I got, I really felt like um, like it was unfair. I, I know that sounds silly because you know I always tell my kids I. Ah, Life ain't fair, you know, but it just felt like, man, it's just too good of a show. We've worked too hard. We've given it our all, you know, and, and there was this narrative about, you know, that this show was a, a, a show that Bruce Lee had tried to make, you know, 50 years ago and, and Hollywood was like, nah. Um, and that whole story about, you know, Kung Fu. So it just seemed like, wait, this show cannot die like this because of a corporate takeover and merger and then we just got lost in the shuffle and then pandemic hits and they're like, you know, um, and so the fact that we're coming back just shows, man, the, the resilience of, of this, uh, um, yeah, it just shows the resilience of that, you know, um, I, I want to finish this story. I want to finish it. You know, I want to, let's, let's do it right. Let's get this, let's not end halfway through, you know, because of BS. Let's, let's, let's complete the story. So, I don't know how many more seasons that means, um, but I'm fairly confident that we'll probably at least get two more because the cost of bringing all of us back and to build all that set, you know, it makes much more sense to spread the cost over two seasons. So, um, but it could go, it could go beyond that. But I, I, I don't know. We'll see. Or, or, or <laughs> another pandemic hits tomorrow. No. And there's no more TV shows forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. definitely cannot happen. I completely agree with you, especially yeah. given the history of this show, Bruce Lee's legacy. Mm -hmm. I've told you before, I, I feel like you um, and the rest of the cast carry on Bruce's all important legacy and his legacy continues to grow. It's, you know, know. what Shannon is doing with his, with his, you know, name and, and his legacy, mm -hmm. I think continues to grow it. Bruce Lee is as important, if it, maybe more so, given Stop yeah. Asian Hate and all the things that have been happening over the last few years. Um, the work you yeah. all are doing is, is critical. So uh, I yeah. agree with you. Look, at least two seasons, three, four, five, six more seasons. <laughs> Let's get it all. Let's go. Let's um, go. I am excited that you'll be back uh, uh, doing that soon. And I hope that we can reconnect um, when you're getting ready to release season three. Awesome. Awesome. Sooner than later. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations, Jason. Um, Fistful of Vengeance is a ton of fun. I think it's great that it's going to be on Netflix and so that the Netflix audience can, can be refreshed in their memory of you uh, and hopefully then mosey on over to HBO Max. Um, so congratulations yeah. for the show. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much, brother.